Hi, I'm Scotty. I service, repair and restore vintage and antique mechanical clocks. Welcome to Scotty's Clock World. Today's clock is an Ansonia steel kitchen clock. I'll open the front door. You'll notice the first thing we do before we start work on the clock is to check and make sure that the components of the clock are probably right, not definitely, probably right. We've got the clock slightly out of bed at the moment, but the pendulum's working. You can hear it ticking away. That means that the going train components are probably correct. Now we'll wind the hand on till four o'clock. Having struck properly, that means that the components of the strike train are probably correct, but you won't know till we get in because some people chop and change wheels in, in trains, in drive trains, and for example, I might take out a 32 tooth uh, uh, wheel if it's broken and replace it with a 34 or 36, which will completely throw the clock out of whack. It will not be able to run. So they put it all together and put it into an auction and pick up whatever money they can get from it because they don't know how to repair wheels, replace teeth, etc. Right, let's get started on taking this clock to pieces. First we'll remove the pendulum. Take that out. Bent at the top. Someone's had a bit of a rough crack at soldering it. We'll clean that mess up before we put it back in. We'll put it through the ultrasonic and clean it up. It seems to be pretty much in one piece though. The rating nut works, we'll put that aside. You'll notice here discoloration on the hammer. That's oil that is solidified over time. If you can get a close up of it, that's better. You can see it there, that reddish mark down there is oil that's solidified over time. The movement has been excessively oiled, way too much oil, and that's what happens with it. Right, let's take the hands off. Then we can take the movement out of the clock. Take the taper pin out. Been seriously hard pushed in there. I'll have to change our pliers so that we can get a better grip on it. Good grief. Shocking. See if we can back it up a little bit. I'll do this off camera then come back. We've got the taper pin to move. I had to use parallel jaw pliers to get it out. See the rough end on that? It hasn't been finished. I've just snapped the end off and sort of and call that good enough. That's rather deplorable in actual fact. We'll fix that and put in a new tapered pin when we get back. 
see how there we go nice and loose put those aside and it just slides off like so those over there then we'll remove the face by unscrewing these two screws here one that's the second one remove the face and there we can see the movement of the clock now we'll remove the gong one screw in the middle of it once again incredibly hard tied down <coughs> Jesus some butcher's been at this all right I'll have to leave that till later right we'll remove the movement by removing these four screws Put them in a dish, one. Two. Third one up in here. Loosen it there, and there's a fourth one. Fourth screw is in there. Right, that should have it. Now we'll remove the movement. And had two loose screws, one there, and that one, and that's our movement. We'll have a look at that in a moment. I'll get rid of the case. Right, there's our movement. As usual, before we start to take it to pieces, we have a look. At the general outlook of the movement you can see this dried oil layer and there running down on the on the on the wheels pretty thick oil and dirt Springs seem to be in one piece, there's no brakes in them that I can see. Pretty dirty, a clean up will do it the world of good. Okay, let's start to take it to pieces. First thing we have to do before we can start to take the movement to pieces is to let down the tension on the main springs because these are open springs and are not contained in a barrel we need to clamp the springs to hold them I'll turn that over make it easier to see too big think that oh, we'll wind those up a bit tighter there we go we might be able to use a slightly smaller 
clamp on it. Wind up both sides. This is the going side I'm doing now, and you should see the gunk in below that click. Grease and oil and dirt. No, you probably can't see it. It's a bit too close. Okay, turn it over. Lay the movement down. We'll see. Yep, that mainspring clamp will be all right. That's the size we want. We'll find the other one. Go on the other side. Turn the movement over again. Keep the clamp in place. We'll put the other one on. Anyway, that's the one we might have to use because that is not going to fit. All right, turn him over. Just let that sit for a moment. We've got to let that spring down a fair bit. Let down tool under the winding arbor. Tighten it up slightly. Screwdriver under the click. Let the spring start to unwind. Let it go a little way, then stop it. Check the mainspring clamp. Still too loose. Down a bit more. Stop him. Ah, that's better. Clamp is caught. Now we can let it down all the way. There we go. The power of that spring is now contained in that mainspring clamp. Way in down in there. Okay. Strike side train is going to be a little bit trickier to get at, so I'll do that off camera. Once I've got the spring contained in, in a clamp, then we'll come back and move on to the next step.